Hello and welcome back to this tutorial channel. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you something that can be a low tech. It could even be a no tech or even a high tech activity. It really just depends on your preference and the time that you want to invest in doing this. So it's called a vocabulary mini breakout room. And this was inspired by digital breakouts or digital escape rooms. If you ever use those breakout edu, and then also a little piece I saw on Twitter from Jill Webb. She's a social studies teacher that I follow. And this is just a really fun activity. So if you've ever kind of gone into the world of breakout edu, the idea is that you give students a series of tasks or clues, they solve puzzles and use those clues and the information that they get from the puzzle to open a breakout box. So that can be something that you could definitely look into, but breakout edu does come with a price tag. So there's lots of different ways that you can kill, you can still give students that fun problem solving opportunity without it being something that you're having to invest a lot of money in. And that's the idea behind a digital breakout, which I have a whole other series of videos on that. But this specific one is one that's a little less time intensive to set up. And it's a vocab mini breakout activity. It doesn't have to be vocab concepts. Maybe it's events if you're a history teacher or it's math problems if you're a math teacher, um, periodic table of elements, elements. It can be whatever you would like it to be. I just gravitate towards vocab because I felt like that was a pretty general term. So what this is, is essentially there's a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to decide, first of all, what type of breakout do I want this to be? So if it's going to be where you have actual lock boxes and locks, then that's going to be a little bit more of a low tech option. That's definitely something that you can do. If you're wondering where can I get those that are pretty low cost in the auto aisle at Dollar Tree, there's lock boxes and locks. I've gotten those there before. There's also Walmart, but Walmart is a little bit pricier. If you're wanting to go an option that does not have a whole lot of cost behind it or really any cost, want to go the free route, you're going to use technology. So you're going to use a Google form instead of an actual lockbox. So it's almost like the Google form is replacing that physical lockbox and your students are entering a series of numbers on the Google form versus a combination lock. And it's going to tell them if they entered it correctly. You can add pictures of combination locks if you would like to make it a little bit more exciting. But that's kind of the gist here on what you would first need to decide to do. So the first thing after you decide what you're going to do, physical lock boxes or digital lock box, is deciding what your topic is going to be. So I've seen teachers use this at the start of a unit to introduce vocabulary before you go in depth. It can be a review activity. Maybe it can be something that's mid unit to break things up. Totally up to you, whatever you decide your topic's going to be, then you'll wanna list out those different terms or concepts that could be a part of this activity. And then you're going to use a Freyer model template. So a Freyer model activity is a tried and true literacy method. It's basically where you take a vocab word and you manipulate your understanding of that word in different ways. So typically there's the word, there's a definition, there's characteristics. In this case, I put causes and effects, and then there's a picture or visual to go along with it. So in this breakout activity, what you do is you make a Freyer word here for every single one of the terms that you want. And in the middle, instead of putting the vocab term in the middle, which is what some Freyer vocabs do, you're going to put a QR code and students are going to scan that QR code in this activity. And I'm just going to show you how you can first build this Freyer template. So I do have this linked on my newsletter and also on my blog, freshbcsetech.blogspot.com. And what it kind of guides you through this and you can click file, make a copy. So you have your own. Um, so what I would do here is my vocab term, right here. I'm going to delete this. We're going to come back to it. Right. Okay, right, because I'm imagining that's what the unit out that was going through. Um, and I'm going to look up some of these different concepts here. Can look up some of those different pieces. All right, so can look at some of those.
All right. So I add some of my characteristics here. I can move and toggle around that text box. I'm going to add a picture here. I'm just pulling these from Google. You can definitely do um, file insert and add a picture from there if you would like. If you want this to be even more tech heavy and you want it to be a video, um, you can do that. But a part of this activity is that you're printing all of these Fryer vocab. So I'm going to get to that in a second. So I have this. I'm going to, what picture do I want? We're going to go with this one. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Just a little slow on the draw. All right. So I add in my picture there. And that is all good to go there. So I have my text, my concepts, all of those pieces. And you can change how you want this to be. There's been some people who, in this characteristic space, maybe they put causes and effects. They put examples. If it's a broader vocab term. Um, totally up to you and what, what you would like to do. Um, and maybe even your students do an assignment like this earlier in the year, and they are the ones who actually come up with some of those different pieces. So whenever I am finished with this, the next piece that I'm going to add, as you see on this example, is a QR code. So the idea behind this vocab breakout activity is that whenever I have all of these different Freyer vocab cards made for my students, what I'm going to do is actually cut, I'm going to print this and then I'm going to cut it up into smaller pieces. So that way it's like a puzzle that my students are putting together. Um, and that puzzle is going to give them that QR code. They're going to scan with their phone or their Chromebook. And when they scan that QR code, it's going to take them to a slide, a doc that has one of the numbers that's in the combination lock or one of the correct numbers they're going to enter on that digital Google form that serves as their lockbox. So for this example, I'm just going to show you this is des de desertification is the term. The students have little small pieces of this. They put this together and then whenever they're finished, they're going to see like, all right, I can scan this QR code and that QR code actually takes the students to a Google doc that says, hooray, you got the right term. And then it has the number 23. So the students now know that the number 23 is one of the numbers. It's a correct number on that combination lock. Um, and the helpful thing here is that if they put the pieces together um, and it doesn't take them to the dock, then they know that they didn't put the puzzle together correctly. So they really do have to work together. And if you're doing this in small groups, just know that you're going to have to make several copies of this. My tip would be would be to keep all of those different puzzle pieces together in separate um, plastic bags or bags for the students. And at the end of the class period, if you're teaching multiple class periods that day, ask the students to reshuffle it for the next group. They like to make it challenging for the next wave of students that come in. They don't want to give them the answers. So they're usually pretty good about mixing it up and making sure that the correct puzzle pieces aren't close together. Depending on the amount of time you have, you can make this several terms. It can just be short. And that's kind of the beauty of this. This is a much more quick breakout activity. If that's what you have time for and a little bit easier to set up along the way. If you're wanting this to be a little bit more low tech, perhaps instead of taking students to a Google Doc and putting a QR code on here, maybe when they have the puzzle pieces all put together correctly on the back of that puzzle piece is telling them to go to a location in the classroom where they find the next clue or where they find a clue that has the number they're going to enter on that lock. It's totally up to you. I kind of like this QR code to a doc just because it's a little bit easier for the teacher to set up and maintain um, less printing and writing around on things, but it's totally up to you. You have total flexibility. All right. So to make this QR code, I do have one linked on here. It's just a free one called qrcodegenerator.com. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and make my answer key option. All right. And um, what I'm going to do I would tell you, do not number these when you give them to your students, because that might tell them the order. If you're thinking, well, maybe they solve all the puzzles correctly and they have all of these numbers, maybe it's a six digit combination lock, or it's something that has a bunch of different steps. How do they know that they're in the correct order? The person I follow on Twitter that I got this activity and inspiration from, what she did is to help students know 
what order the combination lock numbers had to be in. She just wrote on her whiteboard alphabetical order. And some of the students noticed that right away and some of them it took a little bit longer time. So something that you could do is do that. And then students know that whenever they have all their puzzle pieces solved correctly, um, the vocab words have to be in alphabetical order. And when they're in alphabetical order, then the numbers that correspond with each one of those terms is the order that the combination lock has to be in. So that is something else that's also a little bit fun um, to do as well to make it a little bit more challenging and they have to work together. Okay, so let's imagine that for this, my correct answer is going to be the number 12. So that's also the piece here if you're wanting to save a little bit more money. Um, if you use this digital Google form, then you can make several different clues. You're not limited to the limited number that's on a lockbox. Right, so I'm going to write that on here. Okay, and the next thing is I just need to make it so other people can see this Google Doc. So one way you can do this is if I click share, I can do get the link to where anyone on the link can view and I copy this and that's what I'm gonna go and paste in my QR code generator. The other thing is you can also just publish this to the web as well, which is pretty easy. Um, and it won't ask the students to sign into Google on their phone or whatever device they're using. So I just publish this to the web that's under file, publish to the web and I do link, control C to copy. And then what we're going to do is come back here to my QR code template and go to qrcodegenerator.com and then what I do is I just paste in that link that I copied from my Google Doc. And I'm just going to say, how do I want this to be downloaded? And we're just going to go with the JPEG because we don't need anything fancy. And now it's just going to think. And whenever that's finished, it's going to have saved a QR code image on my computer, which I'm just going to drag and drop onto my Google Slides presentation. All right. So I'm going to come back here to my monsoon slide. And that is set up right there. I'm just going to resize this and put it in the middle. You can make these QR codes however big or little that you want. Um, it generates a different QR code for you. So don't think that it's going to give you the same one every single time. They're always different. So if you look, there's slight differences between these two as well. Okay. So once I have that on there, then I would just keep repeating this process until I have all my terms done and I have all of these different, don't put it on the same, different documents, unless you wanted to, them to only solve one puzzle and they have all the answers, different documents that have the combinations. And then I'm finished on this digital frayer part. So my next step would be to print these and to cut them up into pieces so that students have to put them together. Some teachers are a little bit more, I guess not nice, but make it a little bit easier on the students when they do this and they just cut them into four pieces. So they have to piece it together that way. I've seen other times where they've sliced it up quite a bit. So it's a little bit more complex for the students on there. If you're wanting it to be easier for the students when they get to solve these puzzles, then I would recommend um, kind of shrinking this text box and this one and making your QR code bigger just so it's easier for them when they go to scan this. But that is just my tip, my personal preference. All right, so we have all of these made. The next thing that we're going to need to do is set up a Google form if that's the option that you're wanting to do. If not, then you're pretty much done here. You just need to double check that whatever uh, the combination answers are that are on these little confirmation messages match up with the actual combination locks with your students. If you're doing the digital version here, then what we're going to do is build a digital escape room um, or digital breakout box on Google Forms. So I'm just going to name this. All right, give some students some instructions. If you want, you can give students a prize. Maybe it's some Jolly Rangers or candy or just an award saying, hey, you broke out of this digital escape room. All right. So I usually like to add a little picture here that almost looks like a lock. So add picture, can search Google images, add that in.
make it bigger, smaller, whatever you would like that to be. All right. And whenever we set up this specific question type, you'll want to do short answer. And then what I'm going to do is I have my short answer one selected, have it all good to go. Um, what I'm going to do is right here, this little three dot button, I'm going to select that and I'm going to do response validation. And what that's going to do is basically tell the student the number they entered is correct or incorrect. And that's going to basically allow them to get through this and know that they've broken out of the escape room in that box. All right. So what we'll do is we decide what the number is um, and we'll do equal to just so you know that it's the correct answer. Um, if you do greater than, they can enter the wrong number and it still won't get them through the Google form. All right, so I like to put in the number here. So our first one was desertification. I think I set that number up as 23. So we're gonna put 23. And then you design your custom error text. So if they didn't get it right, then you're gonna say, All right, so we have that one set up. It's good to go. And then what I like to do is after I make that question, so I don't have to type out all those settings again, I just duplicate it and then I plug in the new one. Okay. And then the next one is 12, okay? So, Whenever they are finished, or if you wanna preview it, I always recommend doing that. So I have mine set up. You would keep going through until you have all of those different clues done. So what we are going to do is just preview this really quickly. Okay, so we're on our vocab breakout box. Let's say that I think the first one is 12 and then 23. All right, so I got those as being incorrect. So I'm gonna try again. Right, so that is um, basically tells them if they get to the finish, they have the correct answer. So it is totally up to you on what you would like to do here. Um, some people break these up to where there's separate sections on the quiz, so it takes students a little bit longer to get through those. If you wanna make it so that the message that students see when they submit this is a little bit more customized, if you go to settings on the Google form and then go to presentation, um, you can change your confirmation message. And then you just click save. So now they know that they did that correctly. Um, so that is how you set up a Google form as a digital escape room. And I am going to link a written out example of this if you wanted to follow through with pictures in case I went through a little too quickly. So whenever I'm ready to use this with my students, I have my Google form set up. I just need to print these different vocab cards, give them my kiddos, and they are all good to go. So hopefully this has been something that's a new and fun option for you. Please try this out and let us know how it goes.